evening for our Monday Thursday service. We will be following the order of service as laid out in the bulletin. And in our Old Testament lesson today, Jeremiah prophesies about two covenants. And we'll take a look at those two covenants and see how they help us understand the sacrifice of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us us rejoice and be glad in it. We greet each other with the Lord's peace. We begin with our opening hymn, hymn 445, 445.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You may be seated. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. For when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment that we deserved, so that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he had said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification, giving him our most heartfelt thanks. We take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Amen. We stand. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak the gradual together. Christ entered once for all into the holy places. The epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 10. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with the true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful." And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
we stand and we say the verse together. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished, prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him, and he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we sing the hymn, Eat This Bread, which can be found in, your, uh, in the insert that came with your bulletin.
we stand and confess our common Christian faith as found in the words of the Nicene Creed, beginning on page 9 of your worship bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn, hymn 631, 631.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to preach to you today. I mean, after all, today is Maundy Thursday. It's the day when we gather together and we have Holy Communion and we eat the Lord's Supper because it's the day that we gather to remember the Last Supper that our Lord had with his disciples on the night that he was betrayed. Okay, but that's not the only reason why I'm excited to preach to you today. The other, the other reason I'm excited is because I get to share with you today my favorite passage from the Old Testament. Jeremiah, our Old Testament lesson for today, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. Now, as you know, the Old Testament's, you know, kind of long, and there's a lot of different passages in the Old Testament. So what makes me say that this passage, Jeremiah 31 through 34, 31, 31 through 34, is my favorite passage from the Old Testament. Okay, well, for starters, it's the context of the passage. Jeremiah was a prophet. He was a prophet of Judah during the rise of the Babylonian Empire. He got to see the Babylonian Empire come to power. And then he had to watch as they destroyed and took over Judah and the temple. If you read the book of Jeremiah, you read a lot of death and destruction. Death and destruction that Jeremiah had to not only prophesy about, but also witness himself. And as you're reading through that death and that destruction, you come across this passage, this passage in Jeremiah, and it's just this amazing gospel message, this amazing gospel message that God has given to his people amidst all of this tragedy, despite all of this tragedy going on in Judah, in and around Judah, God gives his people a reason to have hope, a reason to have hope. We don't really have any wars going on right around us right now. I mean, we don't we don't really have that going on, but that doesn't mean that we, you know, don't have death and destruction around us. I mean, for example, if you've watched the news over the last couple days, we just recently, most recently, everybody saw the Cathedral of Notre Dame burn. They saw the fire that happened. They saw it burn, and that's a church, a church burning. It's, Im- it's an image of destruction that won't soon leave our memories. Okay, well, that was in the news, but also in the news is the natural disasters that we've had. Think about all the storms, all the rain that we've had lately. So much of it has caused flooding. So much of it has caused displacement. So much of it has caused what's going to end up being a bad crop season. And with the storms have come even tornadoes. Tornadoes that have not only caused destruction of towns, but have also caused death. You see, but we have this passage, we come across this passage, and we realize that God, even amidst the tragedies and destruction that strikes us in our world and where we live, we too have a reason to have hope. We too have a reason to have hope. And so what I want to do right now, what I want to do for you right now, even though you just heard it read not long ago, I want to read for you the words of Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. It's, four, it's just four verses, but listen to these words. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." 
And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. It's such a beautiful passage that we get from Jeremiah. And one of the other things that makes it my favorite passage is that we get two covenants. He talks about both covenants. He talks about the old covenant. Well, the old covenant was the covenant that God made with the Israelites at Mount Sinai, not long after releasing them from their slavery in Egypt. It says, the old covenant says this, it says that if the people follow and do everything the Lord commands, then they will be his people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Okay, well, the people, Israel, the Israelites thought that sounded pretty good. And they agreed to it. They agreed to it before they even knew what the commands were. They agreed to it without fully understanding what they were even agreeing to. We do that, don't we? We sometimes make agreements that we don't fully understand what we're getting into before we make them. I'll give you some examples. How many of us actually read the full length, the full script of those user terms and conditions that we all agree to when we want to sign up for a new service? Well, instead, what do we do? We just scroll to the bottom of the page, we hit accept, and we just kind of hope that we're not giving up a kidney or something like that at the end of it. You know, or how many of us actually read every line of all the papers that you had to sign to buy your house? It's a lot of papers. <laughs> or, we'll connect it a little bit more to our passage. How many of us fully knew our spouse or fully knew what it meant to be married before we got married? You see, the problem ended up being, the problem with making an agreement like that, the problem for the Israelites is that they didn't uphold their end of the agreement. They didn't and couldn't, once they got the commands of God, they didn't and couldn't keep God's commandments. And in fact, they often did the exact opposite of what God commanded them to do. They didn't make the proper sacrifices like they were supposed to. And I've heard this somewhere, or I read it somewhere, and I'm not 100% sure where, but before the ink was even dry on the covenant, the Israelites broke it. They began, because think about it, once, once God gave, they agreed to the covenant, and then God gave them their commands, and when Moses was coming down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, what did he find? He found the people were worshiping an idol, already worshiping an idol. They were already, they were already tired of God. They had already moved on. They had already, they were bored and they were like, well, you know, let's create this idol. And they decided to put an object of their creation above God, above God. And that's something that continued throughout their history. If you read the Old Testament, you'll see that theme of idolatry throughout the history of Israel. And it's something that eventually led to their destruction and their downfall at the hands of the Babylonians. But despite all that, despite the destruction that was going on, and despite Israel's unfaithfulness, and really even despite our unfaithfulness, for, I mean, let's face it, how many, how many times have we broken just the first commandment? Just the first commandment, you know? Yeah, you have, the, you have ten of them, but think about how many times we just break the first one. How many times have we put something before God? How many times have we put a person before God, how many times have we put an object like money or our phones above God? Or how many times have we put something even as simple as rest or sleep above God? You see, but despite Israel's unfaithfulness, despite their unfaithfulness to him, and even despite our unfaithfulness, God had a plan. He had a plan. A plan that came in the form 
of a new covenant. It's a covenant that we hear about in the second half of our Old Testament lesson, where it talks about this new covenant, and it tells us that the new covenant terms say, people will know who God is. They will know who God is. The law will be on their hearts, and their sins will be forgiven. What an amazing gospel message that God is giving to his people and to us. You see, no longer will his people's forgiveness be tied to their sacrifices, or will it be tied to their ability to keep the old covenant. But instead, their forgiveness will be tied to God and to his actions. Okay, so we have two covenants. We have these two covenants. We have the old covenant, which still needs to be fulfilled, and we have the new covenant, which still needs to be implemented. So we're at kind of an impasse, right? Well, that's where Jesus comes in. You see, Jesus, God's plan, was sending his only son to do what we could never do, to do what the Israelites also could never do. You see, Jesus lived the life that we never could. He perfectly, <clears throat> he perfectly did the will of the Father, gladly, always doing it gladly and with joy in his heart. And he was the fulfillment of the old covenant. You see, for every sacrifice that the Israelites made, all of those sacrifices that they had to make that you can read about, that they had to make, and every prophecy that was ever spoken by a prophet of Israel pointed to the coming Messiah, pointed to the coming Messiah that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, that's what makes this passage so amazing, is it points also to Christ and what he did. You see, it was his life, and it was his sacrifice of that life on the cross, his sacrifice on the cross that, <clears throat> that brought about both the, full, the final fulfillment of the old covenant and the implementation of the new covenant. He was the fulfillment of he was the fulfillment and implementation of both covenants. A new covenant, <clears throat> and it's a new covenant that you have been made a part of. You were made a part of this new covenant on the day that you were baptized. But it's also a new covenant that you participate in every time you partake in Holy Communion. For it is in these sacraments that you have been given the free gifts of God that nothing can take away. Those free gifts that are given to you in the new covenant, those free gifts that are the forgiveness of sins, and with the forgiveness of sins, eternal life. It is through these sacraments that you have been justified, that you have been made righteous, and that you are perfect before God through Christ through Christ and what he has done. And it is in these sacraments that you have been grafted in to the inheritance. You have been made a royal priesthood and you have been made a part of the holy nation by the sacrifice of the body and the blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May this holy supper that we participate in tonight Remind you of the gifts that have been given to you. And may the stripping of this altar remind you of the sacrifice that your Lord and Savior made in order for you to receive those gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with our responsive hymn. Him 774.
continue by gathering our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. We continue with the offertory and with prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed Lord, give us zeal for your house, your word, and your table, that we may ever rejoice in the privilege of your grace whereby we have been called to faith, sustained in hope, and kept in true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, give us a heart of mercy to love all people and serve them as Christ has loved and served us. Bless your church and provide for her faithful pastors and church workers that we may keep the faith and not be led astray by every wind of change. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Lord, give us the desire to know you through your word and grant your blessing upon the schools of our church wherever your people teach and learn Jesus Christ and him crucified. Inspire us to all that is good, right, and noble, and true, to love virtue and to the true humility of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, give our leaders wisdom and courage that they may serve your word in the punishment of wrong, the promotion of goodness, and the protection of the weak. Bless especially our care for the mothers with child and the children in their wombs that we may not dishonor your sacred gift of life. We also pray for the protection of those who serve in the armed forces, especially Christopher, Scott, Andrew, Paul, Jay, Gary, Michael, Caleb, Jeff, Jeremy, Joshua, Adam, Chance, Cody, Danny, Zane, Alana, and Quinn. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, give those who commune this night a renewed appreciation for this holy sacrament that they may come in repentance and receive in faith the testament of Christ in which he gives us his body to eat and his blood to drink. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, give to the sick healing according to your will 
Give to the suffering relief by your grace. Give to the grieving comfort and to the dying peace. We especially pray for Kyle, Heather, Pastor Struby, Marge, Pastor Carlson, Sabina, Diane, Charisse, Jessica, Joyce, Rich, Marty, Charlotte, Lindsay, Shirley, Nancy, Diane, Cleora, Norm, Nick, Junius, Claire, Bob, Debbie, and Bob. Bring all things to their perfect healing and fulfillment in Christ, that kept through the afflictions of this day, we may know the joy that knows no end in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Lord, give us grace to complete our Lenten journey to the cross and empty tomb, and thereby be strengthened in faith and renewed in hope by this annual remembrance of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. Equip us by your Spirit to bring this good news to all who do not yet know what your Son has accomplished to save us. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship for the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup of supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We stand and sing. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our final hymn. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. 
To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your, heart, may your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. 